Hey, this is Norm with Quantum Innovations, and today I want to talk to you about how a cryo pump works. Now, this is actually the one of the ones that I think is actually uh, really uh, cool as far as the principle of how this thing works. So, um, so you probably have, maybe you've seen a video or you understand how a turbo pump works or how a diffusion pump works, but this one actually works on the principle of, of trapping uh, molecules or trapping particles uh, by using uh, coldness all by itself. So what were the, the, the core parts of the, of the uh, charcoal, or sorry, of the cryo, the cryo. Good thing you can edit that, Dale, because I just went off the rails. But the core parts of the cryo are the cryo compressor, the charcoal array, the cold head. So what we're going to do is, is we're going to take a vessel that contains a charcoal array and we are going to pull vacuum on that and then we're going to cool it down uh, in degrees Kelvin. So this thing is going to get really, really cold. It's not absolute zero, but it's going to get really close. And then what's going to happen is, is that as those particles uh, get near this cold uh, area, they're going to be trapped in the charcoal array that's really cold and that charcoal array is going to serve as a sponge and it's going to trap that material on its surface uh, because it's really really cold and all molecules they have some point where you can freeze them all the different materials that that are there and I'm not going to get into any of that or those principles but the one thing to understand with the cryo pump is it's what's considered a dry process. It doesn't have any oil, as you can imagine. It's just really cold. So this is actually good for certain processes. We used to use this in the ophthalmic industry, but we don't anymore. And that's because if, as you can imagine, since it's so cold that if something happens with the electricity or the chilled water, then the cryo starts to heat up. And then once it heats up, then it can't pump anymore. So the other part of it is, is that that charcoal array, like I said, it's a sponge, so it can only hold so much material and then it needs to be wrung out. It's got to be regenerated is what it's called. So it's going to be heated up, pumped out, cleaned up, purged, and then cooled back down again. And that has to happen on a regular basis depending on your use and the amount of, and the type and the amount of materials that are used in the vacuum chamber. So it's very maintenance intensive for that reason. So it's not, and it's also not the quick on like a turbo pump. The diffusion pump is a little bit longer because you've got the heat up time, but but the charcoal or the uh, the cryo is actually out there a little bit further as far as the maintenance and the time to use, because you can you can wait quite a few hours for that thing to get down to temperature, um, as you can probably imagine. So that's how a cryo pump works. It's really cool. If you want to investigate a little bit more about that, uh, there are quite a few uh, really good articles out there on how a cryo works. But that's just a little bit of an overview of how it works.